what's going on a lot of new stuff that's happening at the end of the video i'm going to give you a full rundown of what's happening what's not happening and how you can get a piece of it and i'm telling you you want to get in you do trust me you really do it's like putting lotion on ashy skin it's just going to make you look so good <laughs> It's a real good email, so I decided to do a video about it. Five financial rules for the self employed. Many people, and this is something that I really see quite a bit, Tom, is people want to start a business. And the thing that makes their life so challenging is the reason they can't really start a business. Now, understand, you can start many businesses with little to no money now. The internet, and understand me, the internet does not level the, the playing field. The internet is a new playing field. And that distinction throws people. But with the new playing field of the internet, you can start a business and within a year or two, or maybe three, be making a livable income from your own gifts, from your own intellectual capital. It's very, very possible. However, you will have to work your ass off, Tom. And that's the thing that people are just really, really trying to get around. However, that's not what this video is about, Tom. This video is about the five financial rules to self-employment. Number one, you must have a savings account. Not kind of, sort of. Not, oh, well, it'll be good. You must have a savings account. You must have reserves. You must, you must, you must. 2012, I made a critical error chasing the social media craze i hired an assistant i was doing all kinds of stuff i was paying for pay-per-click advertising i was on twitter i lost so much money because typically when i do projects i commit to you know 30 days 90 days 60 days or maybe six months and i did a six month assessment it's like all right we're gonna do this hell i order for six months to get the good data in the beginning it was okay but it went up, then it went down, then it stopped, and we readjust. And I just learned a lot. I was doing better with what I'd started here on YouTube doing than spending all that money and time on social media. But the whole point was there was a six month period where I made no money. None. Lost money, in fact. Money was coming in, that's called revenue, but there was no profit because I was spending so much on the assistant the advertising uh, seminars there was no profit whatsoever for six months now how did i make it and manage to pay the assistant i had a robust savings account at the time made all the difference in the world because i didn't lose sleep and then start tweaking out i was like okay this is not happening and i know if you're in the position where you're like so financially pressed to hear some like i'm not making any money for six months oh fuck that I couldn't do that. And the thing is, is, you can't because you haven't prepared for it. And that's where developing the habit of savings and having a savings account is so damn important. It is the difference between having a business and not having a business. You have people that have great ideas. Their business is making some money, but because they're not making enough money to maintain a lifestyle that they have to go out and get a job. So when they stopped putting forth the effort they was putting in the business that made some money it even goes down even further because their attention is off of the business and then you know we get i've got this saying of you can't live the dream and chase the dream at the same time and that just throws people with the whole deal of lifestyle you must live well below your means if you're serious about starting a business You've got to really crank it down. I mean, if you are in a position where you occupy with a job right now and you want to give your shot at entrepreneurship, you've got to have a very real conversation with yourself. 
I will say to any young man out there, like Tom and his friends, if you're 18, 19, 20, this is the time for you to start a business because you don't have any obligations. Many people will say, no, this is not the time. Go to college. Do No, you have plenty of time to make a lot of mistakes, to screw up, to waste money, and it's just not going to harm you, whereas it's someone who is 50 trying to do what you're doing. This is the time. Trust me on this. And then with the lifestyle, you, you really got to say, what's more important, this business or me maintaining the status quo, which is what really throws a lot of people. It's like, I want to do this business, but I don't want my life to be changed. And I, I want it to get better, but I'm not trying to give up my cable. You know, me and the good boys and me and the girls, we go going to a Vegas no, I know I haven't paid my credit card bill. And no, I don't have any money saved, but we go on to fucking Vegas. Those type of actions display your insincerity of starting a business. Your actions are wholly incongruent with what you're saying. You're like, oh, I want to start a business, but no money saved. You, you, you're blowing what money you do have on trips. And I'm not saying that trips are bad, but there's... A proper time and place for this if you want to successfully grow your business there are many people who say everyone's not cut out for entrepreneurship and I say well everyone's cut out for eating everyone's cutting out for wearing clothes everyone's cut out for having a place to live it's conditioning Damien Dash put out this thing on the breakfast club and a lot of people were going in on him because he's like you know if you are want to leave your kids some you have to start a business you have to be about ownership. You have to be about putting forth your own money. And at the core of his message, I agree with him 100%. A lot of people don't like his delivery, but a lot of people don't like my delivery. And when you tell people the truth in a very unfiltered, unvarnished way, it makes them uncomfortable. And what he was saying is the truth, because that's how I live. I don't have a job. I have not had a job in 15 years. I mean, seriously, <laughs> it's just how can you... And if you have a job that where you're getting high six figures, 500,000 a year, 1.2 million, you can build wealth with those type of jobs. But those jobs make up what? 0.5% of the economy? There's only 0.5% of the population that's got that type of job. So really, you could make CEO money in five to 10 years by starting your business more so than going into corporate America and working up the ladder if that's still permissible. Because essentially, many jobs are filled before they're posted. So if you're not in that network, you're not getting that job. That's just how it is. And even with the recruiters, it's the same thing. They already know who they want. They already know who's eligible. And if you don't have the pedigree, you're not getting in there. It's just not happening. So you have to live very, very far below your means you you have to say okay i am making let's just say you're a business owner and you're making fifty thousand a month you need to live on 10 which is a great living in most parts of the world notice i did not say just the united states i said 10 g's a month living income is a great living in 99.8 percent of the world most cities in the u.s most cities around the world so you make it 50 with, with, now, what, why would you do this? Because it's like, okay, why not live low on 25, Glendon? All right, Tom, this is why. Businesses have seasons. You might be stroking it hard. Remember what I said about 2012? And then something happens. And if you're just accustomed and have a habit of blowing all of your money, it's going to be very hard for you to pivot when your business dictates that you must pivot so if you go ahead and build a habit before something bad happens when you do this stuff before something crazy happens tom then when it happens you're not all stressed out you're not tweaking out you're not losing your mind you you're not going through this thing where you can't sleep uh when i moved away from the amazon model and start really really pushing my thing there was months i didn't make any money it's just serious i mean but the thing is I will give you the benefit of, I've been doing this long enough where I don't get freaked out by that thing, but if you're transitioning from a W-2 situation to a I am in charge of everything situation, you could literally have an anxiety attack because, like I said, there was a six-month period. I was pulling money out of savings. The you know, business was not supporting itself, and that was because I made a critical error. 
I did half half ass research. I listened to the wrong people and I paid the price. But once again, the savings account was in place and nothing got cut off. Nothing got repoed. I didn't lose anything and actually still grew my business. I just didn't grow it from a financial standpoint. Now, when you live below your means and you do it for a long period of time, you become comfortable with making decisions. You just don't go out and buy stuff on impulse. You're like, okay, I'm going to get X, Y, and Z. Everything that I have was pretty much a planned purchase. And you start doing that and then you start saving money for things. And then your life is just so much less stressful when you do it this way. It is incredibly less stressful. It's just, I can't, I just can't explain it to you unless you ex, you live it. And also, you have a period when you get to this level of, you don't make a lot of money, you still live well because you pay cash for all your stuff. You don't have a lot of debt. You may not even have any debt. And it's just takes your energy and your ability to focus on your business to a higher level. When you're not worried about how can I eat, you can worry about how can I get more customers. Then next thing you got to do, you got to keep your mouth shut about your savings account. One time I was out and I was drinking. I was having a friend. And actually it was with another Tom, Tom. And I just said something really, really stupid because I was in my phone and I was waiting on something to happen and, and I checked my bank account and Tom just happened to be right there and he saw what was in my savings account and he's like, for real? And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's me. And the next thing I know, about two weeks later, <laughs> I get a text, hey, yo, can I hold 1500 and I, I was just like, what the hell? And then I committed a cardinal sin. I was lackadaisical and I was stupid. When you develop a robust savings account, it is nobody's business but yours. And if you're married, maybe nobody's business but yours and your, your spouse's. You cannot let family know that you've got disposable income or disposable funds just laying around. People, all of a sudden, people start getting needs on your money. And I was just like, dude, I can't do that. And it, then, then he did the guilt trip. He was like, well, you got it. And I said, cloud has water. Doesn't mean it's going to rain. And, you know, it fractured the friendship because I was accused of being selfish. I was accused of being all kinds of stuff. And what's funny is this person knew my history of being in the fucking boarding house, being homeless. He never went through none of that shit, but he was hating on me. And I was just sitting there like, and the friendship has not been the same. I wasn't flexing, wasn't flashing. I was minding my own business and I was a little careless and it turned into this big brouhaha. On my money that I earned, that I made, that I saved, it became an issue. And that's why, you know, you hear all this stuff about people who are rich, how, well, you know, Rich people don't like discussing money because they consider it vulgar. Bullshit. It ain't vulgar. They don't want you to discuss it because they don't want you to ask them for shit. If you don't talk about it, you don't know what they have, then you're not asking them for shit. That's what it's about. <laughs> vulgar. Rich people. I know a bunch of rich people. They talk about money all the time. Drop out. How, you know, if they feel comfortable with you. They'll tell you how much money they make. they tell you what investments are working. They'll tell you what's bullshit. If they feel comfortable with you, that you are not going to try to drain them or take from them. They will share like you would not believe. I've had people, 30-minute conversation. I have one guy. He owns a business. He does about $1.5 million a year from his business, but his profit margin is like 87%. And, you know, we sit there and talk about this stuff, you know, and I've known him going on about two years. And he just tells me everything because he knows that I am not trying to get anything from him. You know, we can have that conversation. He can say, hey, I went here vacation or whatever. Oh, you know, I see you in the gym. We can have that conversation. But when you are from a don't have a robust savings account, you're always living in a state of lack. You can't look at these people at who they really are. They're just people. They have more money than you do, but still, at the end of the day, they're just people. And you cannot see their humanity because 
of your lack of funds and lack of resources. So you're looking at them as if something they really are not. They sit down to take a shit just like you do. They get happy. They get sad. All that stuff that you go through, they go through the same thing. But since you're looking through that prism of that prism of I ain't got shit, you can't see their humanity. And that's an issue. So once you get yourself together, Tom, when you get your shit rolling, Tom, then you keep your savings account to your damn self. Trust me on this. If you get nothing else from this video, trust me on this one. Okay, Tom? Now, you need to, another rule of being self-employed, you need to partition your money. Now, what do I mean about that? When you get paid, your money needs to go in four to five accounts. There's expense account, expense account, savings account, savings account, investment account. So as soon as you get paid, it goes in like that. And once you develop this habit, I'll let you know in a little secret, Tom, you'll never be broke again. You'll never be broke again. You, you'll always have money. I go into depth about this in disruptive money. You will never be broke again. You'll never like have on a situation where, oh shit, I need $500. Oh, wait a minute. I got $500. You will not go through that bullshit that so many people go through because they have no financial discipline whatsoever. As a self-employed person, business owner, what have you, you must develop financial, personal discipline or your business could be doing great. But because you got a crack habit, a cocaine habit, a hoe habit, you are robbing your business of its oxygen, which is you know, revenue to fund your habits and you're killing it when it's a great business. When I was in the store instruction business, there was this guy that owned the restaurant. I think I did one of the stories about him. This guy, the restaurant was doing about 80K profit per month. However, he had a Benz leased. His wife had a Benz leased. His sh sugar baby, his, his, his he, he had a girl. He had a hoe. Okay, he, he was paying for this young chick. She had a Benz. She had a condo in Buckhead. So when I just sat down and, and started calculating, he had outgo on the personal level of about a hundred thousand a month. American Express limit like two hundred thousand maxed out. Uh, private banking credit cards maxed out because he had a business that was making him eighty thousand dollars a month profit. That's seven figures annual revenue. That's that's I mean seven figures net revenue. Seven figures net revenue. At that level, you're paying cash for houses. Not just cars, houses. He had all this shit leased. Then, as I talked about earlier in the video, Tom, you have cycles with your business. Something happened, the money stopped, and credit 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 card companies, banks love to give you money when you don't need it. But when you need it, you can't get that shit. And everyone cut his lines off. I mean, all the paperwork was there. You know, they had the filing cabinets. I'll just go through the stuff, you know, when I was in the warehouse, because it was just so interesting to see someone who was making so much money because he did not practice the five rules of, of being self employed. It all imploded on him. So you've got to really, really, really learn how to partition your money, stack your money, and learn to have a robust savings account. Now, the fifth rule of being you know, self-employed, the fifth financial rule of being self-employed is pay for shit in cash. Now, you don't have to be rich to pay for a car in cash. Some people think you do, or they have this idea that if I don't pay cash for a car, you know, it needs to be a Benz, it needs to be a Robles Royce Phantom. No. What's most important, Tom? Starting that business or flexing like you had a business already? What's more important? I didn't have a car note for 14 years. I had a 525. I had some other stuff from those storage and stuff, but I didn't have a car note for 14 years. Do you know how good that felt? Right now, I don't have a car note. I had one for a little while. Now I don't have one again. Cash and carry. Now, let's talk about this. When you pay for your stuff in cash and you reduce your monthly outgo, you don't have a car payment. You don't have credit card payments. Once again, less stress, more money, and more intellectual capital to go into your business, Tom. But if you are, got the car note and you got to have that nice car because, you know, your wife or your girlfriend, she ain't riding the piece of shit. I'm going to tell you something about that in a minute. 
you are a person with misplaced priorities. Your shit's just janky all the way through and through. You've got to reduce your burn rate before you try to start a business. Because one of the things that happens here at the Hustler Mindset Project, since I started off as a storage auction guy, there's so many videos on this channel that are geared for storage auction people. Many people go to, oh shit, life's fucked up. I need more money. How can I make money quick, quick, quick? Oh, let me go to YouTube. Oh, there's this guy's Glenda. Yeah, I could buy a unit for $10 and make $1,500. And that's true. But you might buy 25 crappy units before you get to that one. So many people come in here on the quick come up tip. And they don't have any financial discipline and don't have a lot of money. And they're looking for a lot of resources for little to no resources and that's a fool's errand and that was happens all of the time and that's the reason I, I was sitting down and I was like I need to do this video because if you're going to be self-employed you've got to practice managing your money a different way than someone who can have a job and half-ass do their job but as long as they show up Monday through Friday they get a check every two weeks that is not your reality as a self-employed person unless you've built your business to the point where it's kind of running on automatic that could happen but in the most part is you got to push to make those dollars shake out the dollar tree now part of that happens when you're able to focus on your business when you do that you really really set yourself up to win I've had many things happen but once again because of that robust savings account I was able to weather the storms. But when you have no self, you know, because I was sitting there thinking, uh, I was listening to this conversation, and this guy borrowed $20, and it was on the Tuesday, and he said, you know, that was all the money he was going to have until Friday. And it, it made me sad because I remember living like that. I remember living that lifestyle. Spend all your money. You don't have any money for days or weeks until you get paid again. That is incredibly stressful. Because life does not stop because you don't have any money. It doesn't. So get yourself a robust savings account. Go through these five rules of being financial rules of being self-employed. And this is just the first five. There is more, but this is the foundation. This is the simple stuff. This is what everyone needs to do, whether you have an eBay business, an Amazon business, you're hustling on Craigslist, you have to get yourself some attitude money somewhere. And I'm going to tell you, if you had a savings account of 10 grand, 10 grand, and you know, a halfway decent work ethic, you in the house, you could do so much with that. Notice that I didn't say millions, hundreds of thousands, because many of us become seduced by these internet businesses. And it's like, hey, you know, round two, this company raised 5 million, this company raised half a billion. Those are different business models than what you're doing, unless you're doing some kind of tech business. You have to look at old school business rules because they're still in effect. This, once again, what did I say earlier? The internet is a new playing field. It's not an extension of the old playing field. You can leverage the internet for your current offline business. But what I tell my customers is if you want to go online, create a separate online extension of your business where this does the different stuff and it can filter people to your physical business. But the reality is if you gear your website, you, you do what you need to do, you've got an online business that can be a separate part of your business and it could essentially make more money than your physical business while you still have your physical business and it's doing what it needs to do. Because that's what we did when with the warehouse. We sold stuff to the public and we sold most of our stuff online. And when I realized the internet is a different playing field because you have people who are very, very successful with their physical business. Or their offline business and then they come online and it's just like what so if it was an extension it would be easy because they're already good at business but they're having a problem with the online business because it's a different animal understand that Tom know that all right this is Glendon I'll see you on the good side all right this is what's happening I've created the hustler mindset project audio club but it's a little different there's no monthly fee it's a one-time jump in like you know the gangs we jump your ass in now it's currently 99 dollars and 
once you pay that's it forever and forever uh, there's the storage auction books Craigslist books uh, the hustler mindset project the book I released last week and the book that's going to be released this week hustle sweat and profit will be included now this is how it works once you come in you're in like you know blood you know we you, we just bring you in and you get nothing but love every week when I had a new book or whenever I had a new book the price of it goes up so the earlier you get in the more that you save now let's talk about the hustler mindset project got a little technical snafu that's been holding me up on the release of that so everyone that's come in I've been giving them access to a lot of stuff but we should work that stuff out very soon uh, then if you want to ask me a question many people come to me with questions they'll send me an email that's five six seven paragraphs long that's a consult or that's a paid question because it will take me time to research or I could literally spend an hour doing that and it's cool but I'm a capitalist I get paid for stuff like that so if you got a lot of questions just go to the link below everything's below and just get a requested video if you want to share with the world it's 25 bucks if you want a, just a private question answered it's $50 it's that simple that's simple so everything is below and I'm making stuff easier and easier and easier and easier to consume there's many people who don't want to be a part of the hustle mindset project so I'm going really hard with gum rope there will be a lot of stuff there a lot of things that it will develop a lot of things that will help you have a healthier wealthier more peaceful life because for me time is the most important resource you have and, it, and that's what, everything I do is geared toward keeping me free from the constraints of normal occupations because what people go through on a job can be dehumanizing demoralizing and just make you want to kill yourself because jobs are designed for the owner and not designed for you unless you work for some really super super progressive company but understand a lot of education is going to drop in 2015 so the earlier you get in the better I'm going to I'm working on having a live event no let me tell you about the live event it's going to be in Sandy Springs Georgia just trying to hammer down the dates for the room and we're gonna have one-to-one -on -one hands-on instruction classroom style and it's gonna be the first thing is gonna be video profits because many people do not understand video I watch a lot of YouTube I watch a lot of other guys who are video business people and they have a certain niche hammered down they have something they're really really good with but there's other parts of video that no one ever ever talks about no one ever says anything about that because you hear optimize your video so people can find it once again with the video you have people who are gearing their videos for entertainment views entertainment views and how-to views and business views are so radically different you can't judge each bucket of views with the same prism or the same criteria you just can't because that leads you astray because if you were doing business videos if you can get 500 to 2500 views per video you're doing amazingly well you are not going to get the views of some girl smacking her lips with ruby red lipstick on because she got it from Mac and she'll get 500 views maybe 1.2 million for that <clears throat> there's just more people who care about that stuff than business that's just reality so once again go below make sure and there's a lot of stuff here I know I know but make sure that you get on the email list because the email list is an audio newsletter I'm not sending out regular emails anymore it'll just be a quick bam this is what's going on this is what's dropping and you can just listen to it and you don't have to worry about reading it one of the reasons I did that is people don't have time because they have jobs and I saw this st statistic there are people who buy books roughly 70 to 80 percent of people who buy books do not finish reading them then I thought what is the percentage of people who do not read emails you didn't pay for it I'm gonna say most people don't read emails they may open it and they may scan over it and that's about it with that information in hand why am I gonna keep giving you something I know that you're not going to absorb just doesn't make sense and that's one of the things that I've been moving toward audio moving toward video for a long long time so what's gonna happen 
for those of you who want the Hustler Mindset Project, that's why I said it for last, because those you people are hardy. You people are just like, hey, it's 1500 you're in for life, and everyone that buys the current offering of the Hustler Mindset Project, which is 1500 bucks, we're going to have a hands-on consult, because I've been consulting for two years, and I've got a better handle on how to make it better for you. So there's certain questions, there's certain things that I'll just take you through to make you more successful. And usually it takes a few sessions, but I've got a really good one where I can get you going with one because that's the whole thing. So you join the Hustle Mindset Project, then we sit down and develop a life plan for you. If you don't want to join the Hustle Mindset Project, we can go to the normal consulting rate, 750 an hour. And that's and the reason I do that, the more that I charge, it seems to be the more that people take it to heart and they take action and they do stuff. It's amazing. Whereas I can give you the same information for free and a lot of people will not take action. But you like 1500 bucks. It's like, shit, I paid 1500 bucks. I need to make this do what it needs to do. And I like to see that. So that's how that goes. All right. This is Glendon. Be sure to get something. Email list. I will say the disruptive circus is a good alternative for folks who don't want to do the full fledged hustle and mindset project because that's going to be a growing body of work. It's going to be a seriously large body of work. Just letting you know. Be sure to get some. All right. Be sure to get some. Oh, uh, for you folks, um, you make it this far. What I'm going to do because T-shirts are coming. So if you made it this far, put in the comments, I want a t-shirt, G. Just put that in there. And when I get to that point, I'll come back to the video and I will give you a special discount on the t-shirts because I'm trying to make them look really snazzy, really, really snazzy, really crisp, not just, you know, throw something out there. We'll see how that goes. But if you want a t-shirt and you want it at a good rate, just put, I want a t-shirt, G. And don't tell anybody it's at the end of the video. Let them find it they damn self. All right, this is Glendon, and uh, I'll see you in the next session.